of okay. discrete drivers at every light, we built a Mondo driver. So this is actually... This is a light engine for 64 lights. Really? And it powers 64 lights with low voltage wiring. So you put this in a server rack or some kind of rack somewhere. Yeah. And look at what we just did. We now changed the installation dynamics. We're now no longer needing a certified electrician. We're now a networking lay-in. Our material costs are dramatically lower. Our labor rates are dramatically lower because now we use the, the low voltage rate or the network guy. Not so instead of the, the white transformer, this is a 64 of those. That's correct. Right. Now one thing on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the frame here. With install though, they have a lighting codes and things like that and inspection. I mean, you, know, you can have your guys wired up. The inspector might come in and say, well, hang on. You know, we're the city and county. Yeah. There are fire codes, electrical yeah. codes, things like that. Yeah. You can never be new and disruptive and not expect some friction there. This is not greased for us. We yeah. can't walk into every building and go, oh, go for it. But why are those guys there? The inspectors and UL and the safety and the fire teams care about two fundamental sets of issues. They care about fire and they care about shock. Those, okay. are the, those are the broad buckets. When this thing catches on fire, is the line going to be flammable and tear down the wall and, and right. just drive fire through my building? Or are you going to have heat in a condensed area? Is it going like to drip that? flames into the, into the yeah. water system and stop the, the water from working? That's what UL and, and really the fire division or the authority having jurisdiction care about. What did we just do? We just took out lethal wiring. Oh, look, this is on and I'm touching it. We just took out lethal wiring <laughs> and put in... Uh, well, it's not, you, you don't no, want to get like jolted. Right. You will get a little bit of a jolt yeah. at 60 volts, but you can never get hurt by it. Yeah. So we just took in something that is intrinsically safer. Yeah. You can't get shocked by it, and you really can't generate any significant amount of heat from a fire issue. Right. And so while it's true that in the beginning, inspectors aren't going to know what to do with us, they're not going to know how to fit us, they're not going to know under what division to put us, over time, they're going to love this. If a fire is going on and the fireman has to cut through something, he hates cutting through live wire. Or if floors are falling on him or bad things are happening, live wire kills him. He's going to like this in the plenum. He can crawl through the plenum next to this and not worry. Interesting. Okay. And so he can cut through a wall if he has to change the wall yeah. quickly. Or it, It's simply a safer, more flexible system. Now, how about install, though? Like, Because uh, one issue comes up that I've heard about you guys is that you don't need union electricians anymore. You can actually run this yourself if you have IT experts and things like that. Well, let's go back to what I said earlier. The main way lights are installed today is with contractors and electricians. Yeah. So from a business model standpoint, we would be crazy to slap them in the face. We need to find a way to incent them, to have them enjoy some of this and figure it out and add value. I think it's true what you said, that over time, different labor rates will show up and the certified electrician might do the connect to the back of this and use a journeyman or a different rate to the front of it. It is true in the long term that we have that advantage, mm -hmm. but we don't go to market that way. Because I think the way They are an existing channel and people right. seem satisfied. That's I mean, right. it's some level of comfort. And, and the authorities having jurisdiction, they know how to do the earthquake sizing, they know how to do the seismic cabling, they know other things that other people don't know. So rather than disrupt all the way through and you know tear the carpet out, you know we'll put the carpet there and Put a little bit of a you know wood floor next to it or something. We're not going to tear through right away. Okay. Now, what, when you switch LED, I mean, this will also be networkable. So basically, how much oh, can you save? Okay. Wait for uh -huh. it. So, <laughs> so the power side of this architecture has some intrinsic advantages. When you're making a driver for a single light, you've got a lot of overhead. You've got to do the transformer. You've got to do power factor correction. If you want to do dimming, you've got to do FPGAs or digital circuitry to do dimming all of which cost money per light. Mm -hmm. We can amortize those things in 64 channels. So we compress the math 64 to one. What that means- So one component for all the different- oh, okay. So what that means is we have a crushing competitive advantage over a single driver. We can use better parts, more reliable parts. We can make our transformer more efficient. That discrete driver is gonna struggle for every penny. And as a result, it's going to get to the mid 80s in efficiency. The very best drivers out there are 85, 88 percent, 90 if they can do particular careful characteristic tuning. Because we hold and drive 64 loads, mm -hmm. we aim for mid 90s and even better. And I'll explain that in a moment. But in general, more reliable. We can put two power 